Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, lecture series on state space modeling. And we have seen uh, seven lectures so far, and this is the eighth lecture. So we understood how to model the electrical and mechanical systems in first four lectures, and we then in the fifth lecture we transformed the state space model to the transfer function model. And in an effort to understand the transformation of a transfer function to state space model, we had a look at the similarity transformation on uh, similarity, similarity transformation and canonical forms in lecture number 7. So this is lecture number 8. And the objective of this uh, lecture is to uh, learn something about the transformation of transfer function to a state space model. So before going into this lecture, let us have a quick review of what we did in lecture 7. Okay, so in lecture 7, as I said, we understood about the similarity transformation and the canonical forms of the state space model. So if I have a state space model represented by x dot is equal to ax plus du and y is equal to cx plus du, I can transform it using the transformation x equal to px bar where x bar is a new set of state variables and the condition here is that p should be an n cross n matrix where n is the number of states state variables and it should be invertible also and if I do this transformation I will have a new state space model with the states uh, with the matrices a bar, V bar, C bar, and D bar, which are given by these expressions. Okay, that is what we understood. And we also understood that, that this kind of transformation is not going to affect the characteristic equation, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, transfer function, or the input of behavior of the system. So this is the invariance property of this transformation and we call this transformation as similarity transformation because the first model the state space model that is ax plus bu and cx plus du is similar to a bar x plus bu and c bar x plus d bar u okay so therefore that is a similar system and therefore we call this transformation as similarity transformation and also, I, we understood that since P can take any, you know, matrix, any invertible matrix, non-singular matrix, I can have infinite, theoretically, I can have infinite number of state space models for a single system, and therefore, the state space model for a system is not unique. And what was interesting about this transformation is that some transformation, some P, you know, the matrix P, will result in some kind of fixed structures in the state space models of uh, the state space models of the system. So those fixed structures we called as canonical forms and the common canonical forms are controllability canonical form, observability canonical form, diagonal canonical form and Jordan canonical form. After of this we focused on controllability canonical form and observability canonical form, we understood how we can transform the given state space model into controllability canonical form and observability canonical form. Okay, so with this background, we are going to move on to this uh, topic of uh, today's interest. The learning objectives for this lecture are to transform the given transfer function model to corresponding state space model. Okay, so of course, as I said, this can be transformed to in any canonical form, but we are going to focus only on controllability canonical form and observability canonical form. Okay. So to understand this, you know, so to understand how we are going to proceed, okay, the methodology behind this transformation. So let me take up a simple example to understand the methodology. So let me take up a simple transfer function. So first order transfer function which I can represent by y of s by u of s is equal to 1 by s plus 1. Obviously this is a first order transfer function. 
So this transfer machine, I can write it as y of s into s plus 1 equal to u of s. And I can multiply this. Yes, y of s plus y of s is equal to u of s. I can transform this equation in time domain by taking an inverse Laplace transform. This will have an inverse Laplace transform of y dy of t. dy of t by dt is plus y of t is equal to u of t. This we all know because uh, dy by dt will have a transformation of s y of s and therefore its inverse Laplace transform is dy by dt. Okay. So this I can write also as dy of t by dt is equal to u of t minus y of t. Okay. So please note that it is u of t minus y of t. Now this transfer this different this is a first order differential equation. Obviously, this is a first order system because the order of this characteristic polynomial is one and it resulted in a first order differential equation. Can I represent this differential equation in a block diagram kind of thing? Yes, I can do it. See, dy by dt I get by subtracting u of t minus u of, by subtracting y of t from u of t. So if I have a signal u of t and if I have another signal y of t, if I subtract y of t t from u of t, what I will get is dy of t by dt. Okay. So, I have diagrammatically represented this. From this, what I understand is, if I have, if I take this dy of t by dt, and if I pass it through an integrator, I can very well get the output of the integrator as y of t because integration of dy by dt with respect to dt is going to be integral of dy that is going to be y of t. Okay, so I got now I need y of t here, so this y of t I can take from this signal. Okay. So this gives me the solution of this differential equation. Y of t is the solution of this differential equation. I got this uh, solution through this uh, diagram. Okay. Uh, I will call this diagram as a simulation diagram or I can call this diagram as a realization of this uh, states, uh, transfer function. Why I call this as a realization of this uh, transfer function let me explain okay see if i look at this uh, block diagram what i understand is this part is this summer is, is nothing but it takes the difference of two signals and gives an output okay so therefore i can assume this to be when it comes to the uh, realization physical realization in electrical domain i can consider this to be a differential amplifier isn't it a differential amplifier takes two inputs and gives the output as the difference of the two inputs. Therefore, this I can this part I can replace it with a differential amplifier. Differential amplifier I can build using an op amp. Okay. And if you take this, this is an integrator. Again, I can build an integrator using an op-amp circuit. So this differential amplifier output, I can give it to the integrator, take the output, again feedback. Okay, so I get this. So what I, go, uh, I could do is, I could realize this transfer function in physical array, in physical domain I can get using the op-amp. So I can call this diagram as the realization of, realization of the transfer function okay so this is a realization of this transfer function okay now this realization helps me in another way also see there is an integrator 
integrator output is y of t and its input is dy by dt. So we understood how we get. From this term dy by dt, I understand that y of t is going to vary with respect to time. Okay, so in general, any variable in the system which is going to vary with respect to time, we call it as a state variable. Okay, so therefore, this helps this diagram, so realization diagram, helps me to understand the identify the state variables. So this variable y of t is a state variable. So I can take this as x of t a state variable. Please notice that this is a first order system and therefore it is going to have only one state variable that state variable has been identified. And what about this signal? If this is y, this is dy by dt and if this is x, this is going to be dx by dt. I can represent it as x dot of t. All right. So the realization diagram helps me to identify the state variable also that is another advantage and please notice that if this is the case i can take the output of every integrator as the state variable because whether it is if it is y it is going to get i am going to get dy by dt and therefore y of t i can take it as the uh, i mean y of t i can take it as the state variable and let us assume that this output is going to be dy by dt. In that case, the input is going to be d square y by dt square or I can write it as d by dt of dy by dt. So therefore, here dy by dt is another state variable. Okay? So, state variable. So, in any way, I can take the integrator output as the state variable. That is point number one. And the other point to be noted here is this is a first order system and this is a first order equation I got, first order differential equation. So this first order differential equation when I represent it, it resulted in a realization with a, with a single integrator. One integrator has to be used. Okay. So that means if this, if this had been a second order polynomial, second order system, I will get a two a second order differential equation or two first order uh, differential equations. In that case, I will have included two integrators. So what it conveys is the number of integrators in the realization diagram depends on the order of the system or basically, so it I mean, that gives me another understanding that if, uh, if there are, if it is a second order system there will be a two integrators and that will result in two state variables okay that is the second understanding so please note these two points every integrator output i can take it as the uh, state variable and the number of integrators in the system in the realization is going to be equal to the order of the system okay now so having said this this realization diagram you know helps me to physically realize the system and also to identify the state variables i can represent this realization diagram in a state space sorry in a uh, laplace domain or the s domain also in that case i will represent it as u of s plus minus and an integrator in laplace domain will have a laplace transformation of one by s Okay, so 1 by s and that output is going to be y of s. Okay, is this. So, this is y of s and y of s I can take back as a feedback and I can complete this. Okay, so this is in terms of state variables, this is going to be x of s and the state variable the variable here this is not the state variable state variable is x of s and this is s in x of s that is the laplace transform of x dot of t that is s into x of s so this is a block diagram any block diagram of course block diagram in uh, laplace domain so this i can represent as a signal flow graph also right so in that case u of s is a signal okay so i multiplied it is a gain one and now I have got another signal 
So this is x of s and this is s into x of s. Okay. So this undergoes a gain of 1 by s. Usually this 1 by s will be written as s inverse. I can write it. X of s extended by a unit k gives me y of s. And now this is a negative feedback with a unity k. Okay, so this gives me this diagram, you know, helps me to understand how this state variables are connected. Okay, so therefore, from this realization diagram, I can get this uh, diagram, which I'm going to call it as the state diagram. This is U of S. Okay, the one important use of this state diagram is, you know, if I know the state diagram, I can apply this Mason's gain formula, okay, and then I can get the uh, Laplace transform, otherwise the transfer function that is Y of S by U of S, okay. So that is the advantage. So I get the state diagram from this realization diagram. And another use of this uh, realization uh, diagram is, you know, uh, it helps in solving the uh, uh, system uh, in a numerically. Okay, so let me explain how it helps. Uh, if I want to get the time domain solution, one way is U of S in the Laplace domain, I can take U of S to the right side, then substitute the U of S by the Laplace transform of the input. It may be a step input or a ramp input or a whatever. And I get y of s as a function of s. Then you take a inverse Laplace transformation. Maybe you can do the partial fractions or whatever. And then get y of t by the inverse Laplace transform of y of s. That is one way you can get the solution of this for the system. Otherwise, you numerically integrate this differential equation okay, and get the solution. So if you compare these two methods, the getting a numerical integration, doing a numerical integration is much easier than numerical inverse Laplace transform. So in all the computer programs, we go for this method, that is the integration of this uh, numerical, uh, numerical integration of this differential equation. Therefore, if I am going to do that, in any software, any computer program, I have to feed in the differential equation. How do I do that? You can, you know, convert this differential equation according to the numerical method of integration, what you are going to use, that you can write it as a code or something. Or nowadays in many softwares, you know, there is a GUI to represent this uh, differential equation, GUI. So something like MATLAB, Simulink, or if you take Scilab, there is something called x cos okay so any gui you can you know input this differential equation graphically how do i do this is the so the differential equation can be graphically you know portrayed in this manner to solve the differential equation numerically using the numerical algorithms and therefore, this diagram I can always call also call it as simulation diagram or simulation block diagram or simulation diagram. Okay. So from this transfer function, I got this realization. From this realization, I got a realization, I got the state diagram, and I can call this realization as the simulation diagram also. Okay. Right. So, another main use of this uh, uh, realization is this realization diagram helps me in getting this state space model also. Because you know, I have already defined this uh, state variables here in the realization. Now, obviously, I have got uh, this is a first order system, and I'm going to get a single first order equation that is the state variable is x of t and therefore the equation is going to be x dot so from this i can write it as x dot is going to be this minus x of t plus u of t right minus x plus u of t i have taken note 
I have left. Okay. So I got the. Uh, this is what is the you know the equation, the differential equation. Okay. So or the state equation. Now the output equation I can straight away get y is nothing but x. So I get or got the state space model, isn't it? So this is in x dot is equal to x plus b u, and y is equal to c x plus d u. So a is equal to minus one, b is equal to uh, one, and c is equal to one, and d is equal to zero. I got all the matrices of the state space model. So Beautifully, I could easily get this state space model from the state diagram of the realization. Okay, so this is what is the methodology we are going to follow in this lecture to find out the state space model from this transfer function. See, I got the state space model for this transfer function using this method. Therefore, the methodology what we are going to follow in this lecture is that this transfer function from this transfer function we will get the realization from the realization we will define the state variables state variables once i different define the state variables i can write the uh, first order differential equations so this first order differential equations is what we call it as written in states uh, in matrix form is what we call it as the state equation and also i can get first order and also i can get the output equation these two equations together is what we call it as the state space model okay so this is the methodology of course the state space model is not going to be unique i can get in controllability canonical form or observability canonical form and therefore you know i can get the realization also into this modes either in ccf or ocf or DCF or JCF. In any canonical form, I can get the realization. In that case, I can get the state space model also in CCF or OCF or DCF or JCF. Okay. So we will be getting, you know, uh, we will be focusing on only on CCF and OCF. Okay, so this is the methodology we will be following to uh, get the state space model from the transfer function model. Of course, this we took an example of the first order system, very simple, but when it goes to the higher side, then the order of the system increases, you know, how to deal with that. So if it is an nth order system, how to get the state space model in these canonical forms. Okay, so that is what we are going to, are going to understand. Therefore, this learning, learning objectives, if you look at again, so we are going to understand this transformation and we will know how to do the physical realization of the transfer function and also we will understand uh, this concepts whatever we study using a numerical example also. Okay, so the question you may be asking now is uh, why do you need all these things? Why do you need this uh, transformation so that may be a question coming in your mind okay uh, i have already explained some uh, uh, important things regarding this especially uh, uh, about the realization and the uh, numerical simulation of the system and apart from this why this uh, state space model otherwise the transfer function model to state space model is important is let me explain in many cases, quite often, you know, we will have some systems, some black box, which I do not have any idea about the internal structure or how it works. But I have to do some kind of analysis or control in the system. 
So if at all I want to do some analysis or control the system, first of all I should get the model. But I don't have any idea about the internals. So usually we do the system identification. How we do the system identification is we give a known input. Okay, so we give a known input u of t which is known to us, maybe a step input or an impulse input or whatever, and then I get output in the time domain. I record it or I can take this you know frequency domain also in either in time domain or frequency domain you know I get the response from this response I you know I uh, equate or fit this response to some transfer function by some method and therefore I can get the transfer function of the system that is u of s by u of s okay so which will relate this input and output that is how we identify the systems usually so experimentally what we are going to get is the transfer function model not the state space model strictly but if at all you want to do some analysis for example so if let us say this is a third order system understood from this uh, system identification i want to know what is going to happen inside the system in the states different state there is three state variables associated with the system i want to know what is going to happen or i want to know you know do some uh, design some control okay so all these things are possible in state space because it can be done in uh, i know frequency domain otherwise in lab uh, transfer as a transfer function model also but the number of tools available in the state space is more than what is available in the uh, transfer function model of the uh, frequency domain. Okay, so uh, it is always better to transform this transfer function to state space model and then design something there, some control structures or something there, do some analysis. You know, it is better because the trans state space is always in time domain. Okay. So that is the use of this transformation. So this is very, very useful tool in control theory. So other example, other uses I have already explained. Okay, so now before going into a uh, real transformation of this transfer function model to the state space model, two things we need to understand is only proper rational transfer functions are realizable by the state space model. Okay. So, we have defined the state space model as x dot is equal to ax plus bu and y is equal to cx plus du, okay. If I want to transform, okay, a transfer function to this model, the first condition mathematically is the transfer function has to be a proper transfer function, which means that the uh, order of the numerator polynomial. Okay. The highest degree of the numerator polynomial should be either equal or lesser than the highest degree of the denominator polynomial. So if I say m as the uh, order of the numerator polynomial and n as the denominator, n as the denominator uh, order of the denominator polynomial, then m should be lesser than or equal to n. This is a mathematical principle if I want to fit into this. If it is a if it is not a proper a rational transfer function. I can do the transformation, but I need to add one term here in the output equation, which I am not going to cover in this uh, lecture. So therefore, we will limit to a case of m lesser than or equal to n, which is, uh, which means that it is going to be a proper uh, transfer function. Okay, right. That's the first thing you should notice. And the next thing is the transfer function in state space, you know, when I transform, it is not going to be unique. This is a point of reiterated again and again. Now, straight away, we let us go into the transformation. So, we take a transfer function that is a case, uh, a proper uh, transfer function, trans transfer function. Uh, I already told that it has to be either it has to be equal m should be equal to n or it has to be uh, m has to be lesser than n. 
and here we are going to take the case of m equal to n so that we will generalize get a generalized uh, uh, result and then we can apply it to any uh, value of m or n okay only thing is it has to be lesser than m has to be lesser than m or equal to n okay and in getting the control in uh, in uh, controllable controllability canonical form what we do is we write this as two functions okay so that is first function is one by uh, uh, the denominator polynomial and the second function is only the numerator polynomial L, okay and now if i split this like this now this i can represent as two cascaded blocks in a block diagram okay the first block consisting of the first term and the second block consisting of the second term so this cascaded plums i can always multiply and get this uh, original uh, transfer function okay so now if you look at this uh, block diagram there is one in variable coming in between let us call this as z of t or z okay now i can write the represent the first subsystem as like this output by input is equal to this transfer function that is 1 by s power n and so on okay now i can cross multiply this again i can when i cross multiply i will get it as uh, uh, s power n into z of s and z of s will come to every term okay so now i can transform this to time domain isn't it so when i do this transformation for example s power n z of s is in inverse laplace transformation it is going to be n to derivative of z of t okay and the derivative so i can use so if i have this term i can transform this to this so in this way i have uh, transformed the entire equation from laplace domain to the time domain as a set of summation of differential terms and the last term is going to be alpha n into z of s that i can transform to alpha n into z of t now i will keep only the higher order of the uh, highest uh, uh, derivative term on the left side and I will take all the other terms to the right so now this minus sign comes here I can just multiply this entire terms with this minus sign and I will get this equation okay this let me call this as the uh, equation number one now I will take the second part of the subsystem okay so the second part of the subsystem I can define as y of s by z of s is equal to whatever that uh, polynomial okay beta not to s power n so on up to beta n now i can cross multiply this also i can transform it to time domain okay beta not to s power n is set of s i can transform it to beta not n the derivative of this of s and so on so therefore i got two differential equations now equation number one and two let us take this equation number one and two now let us try to get the realization diagram from this differential equations okay so this is the realization so let me take the first equation so this is alpha 1 into uh, n minus 1 the derivative of z of t n minus 1 the derivative of z of t into alpha 1 and n minus 2 uh, derivative of uh, z of t will be multiplied by alpha 2 and all these terms will be added up together okay and yeah we are adding up together and we are negating it and it is added with u of t to get nth derivative of z of n okay we also know that if i have a variable or a signal z of t and another d z of t by dt I can connect these two signals using an integrator okay so if I pass this signal through an integrator I will be getting a set of t so I can connect always these two variables using an integrator okay and if this is dz of t by dt I can connect 
secondary way to your office and talking like this. So if you use the same principle here in this, this is it of is it and D is it by DT can be connected by an integrator and all these you know, signals can be connected by an integrator. So we complete it. Now we go to the second equation. So if you look at the second equation, it is beta naught into nth derivative of z of t. Nth derivative of z of t is going to be here. It has to be multiplied by beta naught and n minus 1th derivative has to be multiplied by beta 1, so on up to z of t has to be multiplied by beta n. Okay, so that we will do all multiplied and everything will be summed up and you will get y of t. Okay, so that gives the y of t here. Okay, now we know that if I have d z of t by dt here and d square z of d by dt square, I can consider the output of the integrator as the state variable. So every integrator output can be considered as the state variable. That's what we do. The, all the integrator outputs are taken as the state variables from x1 to xn. Please notice that this will have n number of state variables because this order of the system is n. Okay, and it goes from x1 to xn. If that is so, inputs can be take considered as the derivative of the state variables. For example, this is x1, and this I can consider this signal is x1 dot. Similarly, this is xm and this is xm dot. It goes on. Okay, I can fill up all the intermediate state variables. So we got the realization diagram, and since we got the realization diagram, and since we have defined the state variables, now we can write the differential equation. This is the methodology I explained previously. So now you look at the first. It will have n differential first order differential equations. And the first differential equation is going to be x1 dot. x1 dot is nothing but x2. x2 dot will be equal to x3 and so on. And x n minus x dot of n minus 1 will be equal to xn. Okay, we got this differential equation. So we get n minus 1 differential equations here. And only one differential equation is remaining that is xn dot. xn dot is nothing but it has got two inputs that is one is u and the other one is summation of all these terms okay so that is x1 into alpha n or alpha 1 into x1 alpha n minus 1 into x2 all this up to alpha 1 into x n minus 1 sorry alpha 1 into x n so all these terms together added is Plus this, uh, uh, all these terms added together, negated here, and then added with u is what you get, x n dot. Okay, this is what you get here. And if I just uh, write it in terms of x one, x two, and so on, arrange this, I will get this. Now I got all the differential equations. Now it's the time to get the output equations. So the output equation is. Uh, obtained in this way this is what is the output if you look at this output outputs are contributed by the state variables in through two different paths one uh, represented in uh, red color and the other is represented in blue color okay so this uh, xn x1 to xn state variables contribute to this y through two different paths marked in two colors red and blue and the corresponding terms here in the equation are also uh, are given in red and blue colors. Let us take the red part first. So this is this part. X1 into beta n. Beta n into X1. X2 into beta n minus 1. So odd. They are all added together. Contributes to one part. On the other part. Okay. So the x1 multiplied by alpha n x2 multiplied by alpha n minus 1 alpha okay so alpha 1 uh, x1 multiplied by alpha n x2 multiplied by alpha n minus 1 and so on all these terms together okay negated here so the negative sign comes here and uh, after it it is added with u 
and now the entire term is multiplied so it undergoes a gain of beta naught and multiplied by beta naught here so this is the equivalent equation now these terms x1 term is here and x1 term is here also they can be combined together and the order of x1 to xn if i simplify this is what i will get so therefore i got the differential equations as well as the output equation okay so now i can put them together i can write it in a matrix form i get this okay the differential equations written in matrix form is the state equation and the other is the output equation since this is an sis4 system i will get uh, a single column in the output matrix at a single row in the sorry single column in the input matrix and single row in the output matrix so if you look at the state matrix obviously it is in uh, uh, controllability canonical form because all the elements except the first last row and the super diagonal or zeros the last diagonals sorry the last row is obtained from this transfer function that is the polynomial uh, characteristic polynomial and only the super diagonal elements are what this is in controllability canonical form and the b is also 0 0 0 1 which complies with the controllability canonical form so we got the state space model of this transfer function here okay so this has to be computed c has to be computed matrix a b c and d d is a one cross one matrix now in the similar fashion let us try to understand how we can get the state space model in observability canonical form so again this is the transfer function we took and now for this observability canonical form i just cross multiply this uh, transfer function i get this okay now i bring this uh, right hand side term also to the left side i i see here there are sn terms here in this here and here they i combine them the sn terms n s n minus one terms and so on now uh, keeping the highest order is S term, SN term here and bring all the term, other terms to the right hand side I get this I will have a negative sign I, negative sign I can take it to uh, inside this uh, bracketed term so then it becomes uh, the order of these terms are reversed this beta 1 u of s comes um, comes first and the alpha 1 u y of s comes next so this happens to all as therefore I can write all the terms as a summation okay and this is what I get here and I want to have only y of s in this left side and therefore so in that uh, for that purpose i divide the entire equation by uh, s power n this is what i will be getting if i divide it by s power n and on the left side i have got one more term other than y of s so i just take it this beta not y of s to the other side when i take it to the other side this is what i will get so this is same equation only this beta not y of s is taken to the right side of the equal sign and this is the second term and the third term will be this 1 by s square and it will uh, 1 by s it will go then it will become 1 by s square 1 by s cube and so on and it will stop at 1 by s power n and the last term is going to be this okay i have written two more intermediate terms just for the sake of understanding so i got this equation now I am trying going to write get the realization for this equation. Okay, so let me uh, build this realization one by one, the term by term. The first term is beta naught u of s beta. Let me say this is u, and multiplied by beta naught s will give you this the output. The second term is going to be this. That is another term has to be added. That is beta naught u minus alpha naught y. Beta naught beta one into u that comes here plus negative of y into alpha 1 y into alpha 1 okay so that has to be multiplied by 1 by s in laplace domain in time domain it is going to 1 by s is related to integrator so that signal coming here has to be multiplied by uh, uh, 1 by s or it has to be passed through an integrator that output has to be added to the previous output now I can add the second input also like this. Now let me take a few minutes to explain how this 1 by s core terms comes. 
Okay, so in time domain, these are all the signals you can very well understand. This is going to be beta naught u minus alpha y. Okay, when I uh, send it through an integrator, this is what I will be getting, integration of this. When it comes here, there are three, there are three signals, alpha 1 into this, okay, alpha 1 into y, and this integrated term along with this, along with this beta 1 into u. So, these three terms comes here and uh, summed up here and this is what is the signal here again integrated this this is what this will be subjected to the first integration and because there is an integration already if when you integrate it again you will have the double integral here okay so this integration this will transform into 1 by s 1 by s 1 by s square here so this is what will happen here so this is what comes here and if it is added with this y of s is you will get all these terms c 1 by s term and 1 by s square term sort of time. In this way, I can build, I can add all the subsequent terms and get this realization. As you know, once you get the realization, you have to define the state variables. The output of each integrator I can consider as a state variable. Only difference here from the controllable canonical form is the state variables are numbered from left to right, where it, there in CCF it was from right to left. So we number the state variables from x1 to xn from uh, left to right and therefore the uh, derivative of the state variables also are defined. So now we got the complete realization of this uh, transfer function. Okay. Now I can write the differential equations. Obviously let me start from x1 dot. x1 dot is all the signals coming in are marked in red. Okay. So the first signal that coming in is uh, uh, E, so this is what is our uh, uh, signal output y output is a combination of two signals xn and beta naught u that is what is y that is what is our output that y is coming here okay y is nothing but xn into beta naught u that is getting multiplied by alpha n that is one signal coming in and the other signal is beta n into u so that is what is written here and I can just rearrange those separating the state variables and the input variable together i get this in this way i can write this x2 dot also this is what you will get for x2 dot again clearly it is marked in red you can try getting this equation you will get this and you can go on up to xn dot okay you got all the differential equations x1 to x and n number of differential equations all the differential equations you've got now you got the output equation also straight away it is already there y is equal to xn plus b naught u okay so you got these differential equations and the output equations you can put them in matrix form and you will get this okay so if you put it in matrix form this is what you'll get obviously this is in observability canonical form okay the sub diagonals are one the last column is non zero and all the other elements are zero and you know this is in observability canonical form and the c matrix is uh, all zeros ending with one and this is the b matrix you'll get this so altogether we transform the given transfer function into state space model both in ccf as well as ocf ocf and these are the matrices obtained in the state space models. Yeah, so we got, we attained our objective of transforming the transfer function into the state space model. Now, let us do a numerical example to understand in a better way. So this is the example I have taken. Please note that M here is 1 and N here is 3 and M is lesser than M, okay. And clearly it is a, a third order system with three state variables and obviously the state matrix is going to be uh, of the size uh, 3 cross 3. Okay, so now first thing you have to do is compare with this. We can directly get by inspection. Okay, so by comparing uh, this given transfer function with the standard transfer function. So alpha n is equal to 2 alpha 1 alpha n minus 1 will be 24 so we will uh, write it as okay so we'll start from beta beta n is equal to 3 
beta n minus 1 is equal to 1. What is beta n minus 1? n is equal to 3. Therefore, n minus 1 will be 2. Beta 2 is equal to 1. And beta n minus 2 equal to beta 1 will be 0. And beta naught is also 0. There are no higher order elements, terms. And when it comes to the denominator, alpha n is equal to 20. Alpha n minus 1, that is alpha 2, is equal to 24. And alpha n minus 2, that is 3 minus 1 is equal to 1. Alpha 1 is equal to 9. That's it. Okay, we end it. Now, we are going to get the state space model. The controllability canonical form is 3 cross 3 A matrix. And the last row have to be filled up from A3, A2, A1. A3, A2, A1. So from the last, okay, last term, constant term, negative of those terms, just put those terms. And put the super diagonal as ones, the all other terms are zero. You got the state space, state matrix A. Now B in CCF is zero, zero, only the last thing is, last term is going to be one. And C is this, okay, this is what we got, beta three minus alpha three to be naught. And so on if you multiply if you put here alpha beta naught is equal to zero and therefore only you will have the first two term that is beta 3 beta 2 and beta 1 they are nothing but 3 1 0 and d is going to be beta naught which is zero we got the matrix also now you can get the matrices in ocf so uh, obvious so this is uh, all columns the last columns have to be uh, alpha 3, alpha 2, alpha 1, negative of those uh, alpha terms, terms, and all the sub diagonal has to be filled with 1, and all the remaining terms have to be taken as 0. Uh, if you notice that you get this matrix, if you notice obviously this and this are you know, uh, the transpose matrix. Transpose of this gives uh, this A OCF. Transpose of A matrix in CCF gives this state matrix in OCF. Similarly, B matrix have to be computed. You will get 3, 1, 0. You can see that C inverse, sorry, C transpose in CCF gives C the B in OCF. Similarly, C OCF and D also can be written. It's very simple. You can directly get it by inspection. Or other way, if you are not able to remember this, you know, you can get always using the standard procedure what we did from the realization diagram and you can get the state space. You can get the realization diagram first and then the uh, state space model. We'll just look at the realization diagram also. This is what, again, it is from the uh, respective realization diagrams. We made all the terms, uh, as, uh, for example, beta 1 and beta naught. we made it as 0 and all the other uh, boxes corresponding boxes were filled with the numbers okay so this is in ccf and this is in ocf so in this lecture we understood how we can transform the given transfer function into controllability canonical form or observability canonical form and also understood how we can get the realization diagram or the state diagram or the simulation diagram both in ccf and ocf so we worked out a numerical example to understand this transformation also. So uh, by this we are completing the modeling in state space. Uh, eight lectures uh, we have understood how to model mechanical electrical systems in state space, how to transform the state space model to transfer function model and the uh, transfer function model to state space model. So having done that in the future videos, future lectures, we are going to use these models in analysis. Okay, so we will be seeing the uh, analysis uh, like uh, time domain analysis and also uh, the controllability and observability in the coming lectures. Thank you.